Hey everybody, Tony D with another hot take. And this one is on limits. So I talked in my previous videos about limits, setting limits on the left side of politics and how Jordan Peterson basically came up with that concept that there are no limits on the left side of politics. So I wanted to give you a more detailed example of why that's needed. Um, some of you may or may not know, I used to be a substitute teacher in the New Jersey school system. And uh, one time I went in, I had this class, it was a remedial English class. And I'm a writer and I can teach English perfectly, you know. I know what I'm doing in that area. So I was actually excited to, to teach that. Now, I had done substituting off and on for 20 years. Not, not really steadily, but uh, enough so I kind of knew what I was doing. Um, you know, I had done it fresh out of college, and I was kind of too young. The students were, really wouldn't listen to me. And, but then later when you get older, you know, like in my 30s, kids would listen to me because, oh, there's an adult in the room. You know, up until about high school, and then it, then it starts to get dicey. But so this was, uh, by this time I'm like in my 30s or 40s, I don't remember exactly, but I had a remedial English class. I was substituting for like three or four days. And uh, so I went in, and remedial classes are the bottom tier students. They, they're very disruptive, a lot of them. Um, and some of them are just completely unmotivated. They, they just don't care. And the problem with that is if, if a kid doesn't care and he doesn't want to learn, he won't learn. You won't learn anything. You could go through, and people know this, you can go through high school and not learn a damn thing. You could also go there and learn things if you if you try. It's actually harder to learn with so many people in the school system trying not to learn. I mean, it was that way when I was in high school. I wanted to learn things. <laughs> and um, there were kids around me, although I was in the gifted and talented class. Um, you know, for for most of my 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 classroom runs, I was in... You know, I was in the room with other students who were like me, or eggheads like me. But once in a while, I'd be in the room with kids who were just normal kids, and they they could care less about school. They some of them went on to graduate, or they they all went on to graduate. But some of them went on to say stuff after they graduated, like, "Man, I wish I had paid attention in school." Um, and I would try to tell students that when I was a substitute, I would say, "You should." You should at least pay attention to the basics because you're going to graduate high school learning nothing because they're just going to push you through. And then you're going to say to yourself, man, I would really wish I'd paid attention. You're going to be embarrassed when you have kids and your kid comes to you with help for homework and you don't know what the heck you're doing at, at the very least. Um, so I'm in this class and uh, the first day we had to go down to the library and it was a very simple assignment because it's a remedial English class, look up a Greek god on Wikipedia and fill out the information on this form. And, you know, I had maybe 12, 15 kids in the class, five or six of them do it like before I'm done taking attendance because they're normal kids. And that this assignment's been dumbed down to the point at which even the kids in the remedial class can do it in like a minute. Then there's two or three kids in the class that actually need my help. They're actually remedial students. They're not just lazy. They're actually struggling with the whole concept. And I'm trying to help them. But then there's three or four kids in the class uh, who are just disrupting everything. They're, they're just out of control. And, I, and I'm trying to put stomp the brakes on it. But it's really tough because I'm, I'm the substitute, right? So... Eventually, the most disruptive kid, I kick out and say, go to the principal, get out of here. He leaves, but we still get kicked out of the library anyway, the class, as a class. So we go back to the classroom, and I try to show the kids how to look it up in a book, and they look at me like I'm insane. A book? Oh, my God. Um, kids now don't get to take the books home. They're actually in the classroom because so many of the kids would take them home and not bring them back, I guess. And it was too valuable to the school. And the kids are so irresponsible, they would just be like, well, I don't have a book. you got to give me another one. Um, and I guess they couldn't charge the kid or whatever. 
you know, when you have a kid who's disruptive and he's poor and he just doesn't care, what are you going to do? Keep giving him books? So uh, that was my first day. And then the second day, come back to the same class. We're in the classroom teaching. Uh, same kid, just super disruptive the whole time. About halfway through the class, I kick him out again. I say, go down to the office. I'm so sick of your behavior. You're, you're, you're acting like a knucklehead. Get out of here. Goes, goes away. I get control of the class again. Then one of the kids has kind of a little bit of a breakdown because he's kind of disruptive, but I'm trying to keep a lid on him and he's resisting me. And uh, he finally blurts out that his family, his father lost his job and his family's losing his house and that's why he's so angry at me. Like totally unsolicited. Now, I don't know if to take this as, oh, he just made this up because he wants to get a rise out of me or he actually, you know, he actually is upset. He seemed upset. So I say something neutral like, well, I'm very sorry about that, but that's not my fault. I'm not, I'm not the one firing your father or taking away your house. So, I mean, you still got to get an education. Um, and he still seems a little upset. So I suspected that it was true. Um, and maybe, you know, he, he, was, he was just acting out because of that. But I felt bad for the kid. I think he really needed counseling of some kind. And the school obviously wasn't giving, giving it to him. And in the school's defense, this kid was just being a jerk. You know, that's, he was just acting out. You know, teachers don't have time to play detective with your kid and try to figure out all his problems. Um, they got other kids to teach. But, you know, I, I felt bad for the kid. So day three, I come back into the classroom and the disruptive kid is right out the gate, right on my nerves and really bad. So about five minutes in, I'm like, listen, you got to go out, go back to the principal's office. Now, this is the third time I kicked him out and I'm like, oh, this kid's in big trouble. He's done. He's done. He's going to, he's getting suspended. He's going to detention, whatever. About halfway, and I get a handle on the class. And even the kid who had like a breakdown the day before, he seems to be on board. And we're having an okay class. I mean, it's a remedial class. The assignment's no big deal. It's at least quiet in the room. I got a lid on things. Halfway through the classroom, that disruptive kid comes back. And I'm astonished. Like, what the heck are you doing here? He's like, they sent me back. I said, yeah. Now, a lot of things go through my head. Can I... Can I call down there? If I call down there, and it's true they did send him back, I look like an idiot. <laughs> if I call down there and he hasn't been sent back, then he's in big trouble. But, you know, what? he seems sincere. So I say to myself, okay, if, he does, if you don't disrupt the class again, you can stay. So he sits in the back quietly, and we finish, finish out the class. So I get a call after the class is over, can you come down to the office, please? Now, it's the end of the day. I was going down to the office anyway, and quite frankly, I wanted to see what happened. So I'm like, yeah, sure. So I go down to the class, and I get called in by the assistant principal. Now, I had been sending him to the principal's office, but it's really it's the assistant principal, uh, principals, usually a couple, that do sort of the legwork for the principal. So he calls me in, and he's like, uh, hey, so what's the deal with this kid? I said, well, you, you know, and I outline all the disruptive things he did. And I said, you know, he's got a real problem. I, and I start telling him about the other kid, too. And he says, uh, he sort of interrupts me and goes, well, what do you expect me to do about it? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what, what the heck are you talking about? What? Uh, give him detention. Suspend him. Oh, I, I'm not doing that. I'm like, you're not doing that. He goes, no, no, no. If I suspend him, his his parents are going to be in here. I go, well, maybe they should be. I mean, maybe you should be talking to him. I mean, the kid's out of control. Yeah, but they're just going to say, you don't know how to discipline him. And I'm looking at this guy like, are you nuts? <laughs> but he's dead serious. He's like, yeah, I mean, they expect us to do it. They expect you to do it. We expect you to do it. I go... Well, look, he doesn't want to listen to me. He's already in the remedial class. I don't know what you have to threaten with him, threaten him with. 
uh, you know, detention doesn't seem to bother him. Kick him out of school. <laughs> He's like, no, we're not doing that. Listen, you're going to have to deal with him. And I'm just like, uh, I, I don't know what you want me to do. I, I, if I can't send him to the office, what, how do I deal with him? Like, how do I discipline the kid that doesn't want to be disciplined? If you give me no power to discipline him with, I can't, I can't slap him in the back of the head. What do you want me to do? Um, he's like, well, we can take you off this and give you a different class. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I guess you might as well do that. And then as I'm leaving, he goes, oh, and listen, one more thing. Don't call the kids knuckleheads. I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, you know, that could get into a whole thing. And we don't want to see it. We don't want to see it uh, suspended. I'm like, so this kid was disruptive and you've brought me down here and you're disciplining me. He's like, kind of. <laughs> so the school is not willing to set limits. They don't care about the limits. They only care. Oh, and this was the other thing he said. He's like, you just got to get these kids through the day. And I, what I interpret that to mean is just got to get them through the day. You just got to get them through the week. You just got to get them through the grade. You just got to get them out of here. That's what they're really worried about because he's a bureaucrat and that's how bureaucrats think. This will make it more efficient. We just get the kids out of here. It's not about learning. Although that, yes, there are some teachers who want to teach, but the bureaucracy of a public system kills learning because you're trapped in this school with a bunch of idiots who don't want to learn. They haven't been taught the, the hard lesson of you should learn or else your life's going to suck. And they don't learn that until it's too late. They get out of school and they're like, oh man, I wish I'd pay attention in school. <laughs> well, by then it's too late. By then they have to go do something on their own. And this is what I mean by limits. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the public school system is incredibly left-leaning in terms of its politics. And every government program, and public schools is a government program, is political. And the public school system is incredibly left. 90% of it, at least in the state of New Jersey, my God. Um, so if they're not going to set the limits, if their political ideology won't even allow them to set limits, and the bureaucracy works against setting limits and discipline... You're wasting your time in public school. It's a complete waste of time. The only lesson they're learning is having a babysitter and fighting against them. And I've seen this in the real world when you hire young kids and they act exactly as they act in high school. They act as you have to discipline them. They, you owe me a job. Oh no, they quickly find out they're not owed a job and they, they get fired and they're astonished. Like, well, you're going to fire me. You can't fire me. I deserve to work. This also feeds into why some of these kids come out of school and embrace socialism. They don't just want a job. They deserve a job. And you members of the upper classes or whatever you want to call it, the, the government have to give me one, you have to make it. So people hire me. Because everyone deserves a job, and so do I. Just like I deserved an education, even though I resisted all the way through. I deserve a job, even though I'll resist it all the way through. And that's what you'll get with socialism. You'll get a bunch of babies who will show up, kind of, to work and not really do anything. And then complain that they deserve money so they could do whatever. Um, so... Teaching discipline is part of the limits. And if you don't have that, you get, you know, part of the video I showed at that women's march, you get 11 year old girls go into a protest screaming obscenities about Donald Trump. That's not disciplining your kids. That's turning your kids into a bunch of foul mouth people. Uh, little girls should not be screaming obscenities at that age. They just shouldn't. It's, it's, you're not, you're not brave and stunning that you allowed your 11 year old to go out into a public protest where God, God knows what could happen to, to them uh, if, they're, if they're not watched properly. You know, when I was 11, 
my mother watched me like a hawk. She wouldn't let me go more than a few blocks from the house without like knowing exactly where I was. If she could have tagged me like one of those animals in the in the zoo so she could know wherever I, wherever I was every second of the day, she would have. <laughs> That's what mothering is and parenting is. It's setting limits. Uh, so if you're on the left side of politics and you're not setting limits and you don't believe in limits, I believe that you are going to have a very nasty wake-up call one day.